welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivory Spice, and we're back at it again with the catch up volume 10. Yes, we have reached a what do you call that? A milestone? You can call it a milestone. Right? Yeah, a milestone to the 10th episode. You get me, right? I'm excited, of course. I got my boy Amuk. What are you saying this week? Um, just I'm just here and happy for the show. Really happy <laughs> for the show because I've got a lot to say about Manchester actually. How are you feeling? I'm feeling a bit more better now, though. Ah, good. What about you, Jake? What are you saying, bro? I'm good. You're um, good. Night <sighs> haven't been great in the last week or two, so let's just crack on and say it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, guys. And guys, remember, if you are new to this channel, do remember to subscribe, smash that like button, press that bell for notification, and remember to share. As always, sharing is caring. Yeah. It doesn't cost anything. It's free. So, guys, you know, throughout last week, from what, what from Saturday all the way up to now, two significant events that's happened with at Manchester United. Of course, yesterday we played against Luton Town in Carabao Cup, but we'll leave that later. We will talk about the match against Crystal Palace, the game where we got humbled at Old Trafford. Mm -hmm. Yes, we got served by an old man who's technically supposed to be self isolating. You know, you get me. He's supposed to be keeping his social distance. He outscored Oli. You know what I mean? We can't be having that. That is totally unacceptable. Guys, I watched that match. I was so disappointed in that result. To see Manchester City come and play their first game, they were in the exact same situation as us. And they still won. I knew that if Manchester United played Wolves, we would definitely lose. But to see our oppositions play their first game without having pre-season just like us and go there, although they were lucky against Wolves, they still got the three points, 1-3-1. One, one. I would just like to pass on to Amok. Um, Tell me, how exactly were you thought of the game against Crystal Palace? I can't do that. Like, <laughs> I was really, really, really disappointed in the, in the way that I did not even know what to say or do. Because like we said before, remember what you said? You did say we deserve to beat Crystal Palace. Do yeah. you know why? Because we lost to them last season. Uh -huh. T1, right? And improvement. What's my improvement from Crystal Palace? They gave us 3-1 at Old Trafford. First game of the season. How could we let that happen? <sighs> it's frustrating, but at the end of the day, it's football. You gotta expect wins, you gotta expect draws, you gotta expect loses. I feel we had us. For some reason I feel a little bit good about it, saying we've got first defeat of the season in the first game. Maybe that's gone. Maybe, maybe a little bit of a reality yeah, check. Yeah, reality check. And it was just disappointing. I felt like the players that play that game should have done better and all his tactics yeah should have been improved in what way like the information is right but the self how the players are playing i felt like they were a bit weak like careless mm -hmm. passing the our passes were f floppy i can't even i don't know the only time i saw glimpses of something good was when when they came in Yes, mm -hmm. he was the highlight. Yeah, that he match, was the highlight. Right? But rather than that, everything else was just shambles. Like, I can't really talk too much about the match because I was disappointed. And hopefully, we get to win the next game. <laughs> there it goes. He was heartbroken. I'm okay. Again, look at him. As you look and see, yep. I ain't going to Manchester vest on. <laughs> I now got a lot, but I said, no, you don't deserve me to put that key on right now. So He doesn't feel the spirit of the Red Devils right no, now. No, no. Old Trafford mentioned, look what you've done to my boy. He, he decided to just. You know, boycott the club. Not Normally I'm active, but as you can tell, I'm a bit... I'm trying to get this slowly, but... I very inspired. Let's see what happens in the next match. Maybe you might have that luck, but to be honest with you guys, I haven't got the confidence in Manchester United to be beating any team right now. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because the performance against Crystal Palace at Old Trafford were dreadful. Terrible. Uh, absolutely. Can't, can't disagree. And Jax, what was your opinion of the match? Bro? Yeah. The team selection mm -hmm. was despicable. Uh, uh. <laughs> hey. We're at home. Yes. Why is James starting? <laughs> Good point. We're at home. Why is Scott McTominay, as much as I actually like him, why is he starting? We Good don't point. need a defensive midfielder at home. But they beat us 2 1 last season. We had to go and attack them at Old Trafford. Yeah. Greenwood should have started. Definitely. I'm hearing excuses about, oh, we played the uh, Europa League, so we had to, a, a shorter rest time. 
But we played as the winner. Yeah, we, we had a friendly. We had an opportunity friendly. to get that fitness back up. When others were playing their first game, yeah. we were playing as the villa. Sure. So there was no... For me, that's not a great and excuse. And lost. Not a great excuse. Losing 3-1 at home. Poor selection. The passing was very slow. We wasn't popping the ball as we should. Very disappointing. I'm not going to lie to you. I watched the game with you, I've already inspired. Yeah, we did. We were not you, happy. Not happy at all. I think I fell asleep in the second half as well. He uh, literally did. He was falling asleep. <laughs> I was just watching. I was just laughing all the time. This guy's actually falling asleep. But I, know, I, could, I can't blame him, guys. You know, we were dreadful. We were dreadful. Our passing was off. Mm. Everything was off. The way we, we were set it up was off. A lot of players were, had bad performances. And the fact that we can't use the excuse of just playing, just having a couple of weeks off. If the club was actually inept, you know, and competent, I mean, if the club was competent enough, they would have realised, of course, we have a pandemic, we've had this break. They would have prepared the club in the right way. Instead of giving players two weeks off, give them one week off and come back early in training because they had three months off. Thank you. They had three months off. So it was like, you just sort that out. You, you saw it out. If you, if you run the club, you know that you have coronavirus, you know that the club will start late. You make sure that the club at least have a good pre-season. At least come into training one week, two weeks early. Let me intercept there. Yeah. The coronavirus was the pre-season. The exactly. three months off was the pre-season. Exactly. After the coronavirus, yes. there was only a handful of games. Yes. We should have just continued with that momentum. So for me, the excuse of a lack of fitness is utter rubbish. To be fair, and to be fair, they did like it was only like what three or four weeks ago that they last played. Some of them played in the in the in international duty, so they some of them did have match fitness inside their tank. You know, they had minutes in their legs. Thank you. There is no excuse. It's True. just it's just for guys. I just want to ask you a quick question. What do you think of Ollie in terms of the way he sets up his team, his coaching and etc. What what's that? What do you think? Because at the end of the day, it's, it's, there's a lot of things that can go towards Ollie and go to the players and go to the club, the club itself. You know, as we always said, as I've always said, actually, I've never been in front of Oli. Mm -hmm. I've been saying it from the get go. I watched his first game that he managed Manchester United. I knew he was on the man for Manchester United. I've seen other Wait, managers. Why, why, why was that? Why was that? I've, I, one, like I said, one thing I can give Oli is coming to the team after what we went through with Mourinho to bring that unity, bring the team back together. And people forgot. That's the reason why I felt like the, the players were doing brilliant because they were going through stress with Mourinho. Matteo never smiled. Pogba was always in the media. No, I'm, I'm no, honest. No, 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 yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I yeah, mean? So when, when, when that transition of Mourinho going like only coming in, it was a bit helpful. And one thing that I can say this again, let me emphasize it on this mod. Be as Manchester fans, Full or oh, cause we came back from the after the lockdown or oh, we started playing football again, Manchester were winning all the games. We felt like oh the team is good, mm -hmm. our team ain't good. Mm -hmm. It was the lockdown, other teams, other players were tired, the training session, everything corona affected people in different ways, even the football clubs. So when we came back we were winning. I like that. That's when we got to third. Mm -hmm. But if you got to third, you knew how you got to third. And you couldn't do nothing to improve from that. Yes. Why is that? Like I said, sorry for the language, all you haven't got balls to stick up to Ed or anyone that controls the team. Like example yesterday, they asked him a question and he said he's happy with what he's got. How are you gonna tell your fans you're happy with what you've got when we know we're not happy with what we've got? So for me that I felt a bit upset and I felt hurt hearing that from our manager. Mm. I felt like he should have said. Send like a snake this. See, I need more players. <laughs> I don't like what I've seen today. I don't like what I saw the other day. Maybe I can improve my defence because I think our defence is actually the main issue that we've got at United right now. Because to be honest, we've got better midfield, decent midfield, and I think a fantastic strike force. But that defence is a bit weak and Oli needs to do something. But for me, Oli is not the manager for United. Because just because sorry for the language again, he hasn't got that balls to stick up. We see what Ferguson did. We saw what Mourinho did. We saw what Van Gaal did. Yeah. He was an actor. Van Gaal was actually an actor. And he got whatever he wanted from United. It's just that it was a shame that things didn't work out because we didn't score goals. But Oli is not the man for United. I can say this again and again and again because I've been saying this since we got Oli. It's not the man. He hasn't changed United from where we were. We're still the same. So he's basically saying that Oli has no balls. No. He's basically Oli is a man with a dick, but no two, two balls are missing. He's a Mr. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
Yes. Anything on the earth says, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, Anything sir. the glazes say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Like the Harlem Americans say, but mm-hmm. only you need to have a little bit of more like pride in your team. Need more connas. And stop connas. Only does this thing. I think it's a great thing that he does it yeah. when he does it. When he's sticking up for his players, sticking up for the club all the time. But Oli, you can't take all the pressure on yourself. We saw that yesterday. Every Manchester fan knew something was wrong yesterday. Mm-hmm. And my guy, Jess, what's your opinion on Oli and how he handled that team? And for me, <clears throat> Oli's uh, team selections, they're a bit... Sometimes he gets it right. Other yeah. times, it's just appalling. So the last couple of games are prime examples. Um... I feel like his in-game management is very poor. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of times when... <laughs> there's a lot of times when the players need to be told what to do. The players need to be instructed during the game. But Oli will be behind the man there on the bench doing this. No, no, he doesn't like that. Or doing this. You didn't put your legs, I left, you didn't put your legs on I, your lap. I didn't, I didn't comment on that stuff there just because I wanted you to do it. Because I heard, I knew I was going to talk about this particular topic about Oli. That's why I didn't mention it. I just gave my own description about what I felt like what he does since we've got Oli. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to leave that to you because I know you're going to emphasize on that more. Brother. Trust me, bro. So his in game management is very poor. When you look at the likes of. I hate to say it, Liverpool, Manchester City, <laughs> Arsenal, Chelsea, all these top clubs, Lampard, Klopp, all these managers are on the touchline when needed, telling their players what to do. In the 90 minutes, we need some instruction and he doesn't give that. I feel like, following on to what Mock said, Unfortunately, the hierarchy probably gave him a contract saying, sign this, you're going to be the manager of Manchester United. However, we are in control of the transfer. Sure. However, well, we are in control of this and that. Yeah. Especially coming off the back of Jose Mourinho. We all know he wanted Maguire before he left. We could have cost him for about 50, 55 million maybe. The board said no. A year later, we spent 85. We wanted Bruno. The board were moving slow. Mm. <laughs> Six months later, we paid the same money that Sporting were asking for. Yeah, I know. So, unfortunately, I feel, just to quickly come back to your question, yeah. Oli is not the best man for the job, unfortunately, for me. No, I, can totally, I can totally agree with you. He's not the best man. No. I think we can do better. 100%. With the team that we've got, the players that we've got given to us right now, we could do better than what Oli's doing for the club itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, guys. And guys, of course, I cannot disagree. There are arguments that you can just say that, yes, I can agree and disagree. At the same time, we all know that Oli has his priorities. And we all know that Oli himself isn't the best coach. We can clearly see that, but of course, we, I don't know, we want him to succeed, but he needs to acknowledge the fact and look himself in the mirror and see where he needs to improve. And he hasn't done that. He hasn't self-evaluated himself. And the sad thing about this, because we haven't Incompetent owners, incompetent board owners, they can't sit him down and give him a performance review. I can't imagine Ed sitting down with Oli and saying, I'm going to do a performance review. What do you know about football? All you know is bank, money, etc. He is the Mr. Yes, sir. (laughs) Yes, sir. Anything Ed says, yes, sir. But is that going to change? Never. But let's move on straight to that next match that we watched yesterday, of course, against Luton Town FC. We played against Luton Town FC 5. Key players were missing from Luton Town. Technically, they played their second team. We, of course, played our second team. Yet, we struggled until we get, we got to the 80th minute where we brought on Bruno Fernandes, yes, Mason yeah. Greenwood and Mark Rashford, who changed the game, of course, and made it more intense. Before that, before the 80 minutes, I was sleeping. I almost fell asleep. I thought to myself, how am I going to do my match reaction? I'm literally <laughs> dying. I had to get myself some coffee. Just so I can do my match reaction, it's terrible to watch 80 minutes of match United. All they did was score one goal, which was a penny, and I'm there thinking, I can't let Match United win 1 0 so people can just call us Penchester United again. <laughs> and, and, I, and guys, did you notice that that was like the before that, before the two goals came in, that would have been our the, four, the last four games that we played, we've only scored by three penalties. We haven't scored a goal from open play, which is shocking. Mm-hmm. Until yesterday, that was the first time we scored goals from overplaying because that goal that Van der Beek scored was a defensive error mistake. 
It wasn't yeah. from open play. True. It's not like we built it up, pass, pass, pass. It's technically still open play, though, no? Yeah, I wouldn't okay. classify it as well. Only would classify it as okay, because he'd take any goal at this moment. Any goal at Gordon, he'll take it in. But me, no. Five passes or six passes need to happen to me to tell you that that was from open play. You know? You know, we played our way into that goal. Do you know what I'm saying, innit? Do you get what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. I definitely, I definitely understand what you're saying, but um, going to the Luton game, yeah. the first half, I thought I was watching semi-professional football. Nah, <laughs> we couldn't yeah, string passes together. Definitely. Again, slow. We looked lethargic. These players were just not good enough, unfortunately. Um, on the left, we had um, Brandon Williams. Yeah. yeah. I thought right. he'd done a good job. He made plenty of runs, but the likes of Lingard were just not slotting him in. And he gave us a penalty as well. Eventually, when he was <laughs> slotted in, he did give us a penalty. If we didn't have that penalty in the first half, maybe Luton would have scored. Who knows? You never know. Never Luton know. were playing from the back mm -hmm. and we were not pressing. We made yeah. Luton look like... Uh, Barcelona. Thank you. Definitely. Luton's second team looked like Barcelona against our second Passing team. Passing from the back, controlling the ball, especially more so in the second half, and we were not pressing onto their defence. Not at all. It just shows that we need players. Our second team is not good enough. We could not control and dominate against Luton. Luton's second team. We just couldn't do it. Um, I also feel that we need better players. We just need Definitely. better players. Sancho, we need to bring him in. A centre-back, we need that. Definitely. Okay. Maybe another midfielder somewhere. We just need better players. We need a good squad. Good coaches, good medical staff. We need a new set of medics, new scouts, new owners. You know what I mean? We need, we need a lot. We need a lot of changes and it ain't going to happen overnight. It will take some time. But for that to happen, we need to have the right people upstairs to start making it happen. People that will strategize, put a plan together and make things happen. And we don't have that right now. I mean, what did you think of the match yesterday? <laughs> Brother, you know that message you have half a lot into the mark. <laughs> <laughs> I actually sent me a voice message saying, Brother, why is looting? more confident on the ball than Manchester United. I couldn't, like, I love my club so much that at least even if we're playing rubbish or playing dead, let me see some thrill. The only player I can take up from that Manchester top 11 that don't earn up to 50,000 Friday Williams, which I'm, he might do or might not, but any other individual that was in that pitch yesterday represent Manchester United get over 50,000. And you're playing Luton, I can't, I can't, I don't, like, it's just upsetting and sad to say my team is rubbish <laughs> at some point in time. But at the end of the day, it's not about my team being rubbish. It's just, I just feel like, I don't want to blame all the team much because I feel like the players should have done better themselves because yeah. they got very cool, that we got Mata, which I think was exceptional yesterday. Yeah, he, deserved, he deserved the man of the match because before Mata, I think we would have been in trouble. Mm -hmm. Who was your man in the match? Mata. Yes, oh, really? okay. Who was your man? You want it? As much I'm rapping Van der Beek today, wearing that Dutch kit, but um, um, Brandon Williams for me, he played exceptional. He got a yellow card, but even with that yellow card, he won the ball. And if he didn't intercept that tackle, Luton could have probably scored on the counter attack. And now how they say he's in trouble, but he said Manchester before the half, before uh, after the first half. Yeah. That. Who was your donkey in the match? Oli. Oli. <laughs> the match was <laughs> the donkey in the match. It's Oli. <laughs> And the reason why I say, say that, because as a manager, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to, sorry guys, I don't, like you said before, we don't want to compare ourselves, our team to mm -hmm. other clubs, mm -hmm. but in life, for you to make any improvement, you go have a little bit of competition, like compare yourself to other people, mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. We've seen Mourinho as much as I hate him, mm -hmm. and he does the same thing as well, he puts his hands in the pocket, and I really dislike managers to put their hands in the pocket when your team's under pressure, right? Yeah. And what Oli did yesterday was sit, not even in front of his players, but sit behind his players like this. Wow. I mean, he was doing different motions. Like, we, if you can read people's mind or people's body language, one thing I've noticed is that I feel like Oli is in pressure. That is in trouble. My man, my man is stressed. stressed. All the guy no social was stressing. He was himself. himself. Yeah. Like he was not himself. He knows. Yesterday, you can clearly see that Oli is not himself, and not, he looks sad, depressed. Unfortunately, Manchester United—that's one of the biggest jobs in the world. Um, it's a very, very stressful job, 
<laughs> showed yesterday as, yeah, a, but as a manager. Friend. You should get up yourself, get up this seat, go country your players. I've seen, like I said, I don't yeah. want to compare I'm, people, but I've seen Pep. Yeah. Mansi was losing against Leon, right? Even Leon scored the last goal, Pep still got up his seat, tore his players off. He knew he wasn't going to win to get much, but as a manager, that you want your players to understand, mm -hmm. you go do that. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you saw all these challenge players? Oh, uh, Jesse Lingard last year. One more time, you're off. Now it's the only time. It's cause, probably because he feels like he can talk to Jesse Lingard like that, but he doesn't have the balls to talk to everyone else like that. Like, you can't do that. You got to right. tell people Trust off. me. You got to tell your players off. Because there's a whole lot of things these players do in the pitch that you might change if you'll be active. If you like communication sometimes right or not we've seen manager right or not if you feel like you can't you're not really that active right or not give it to someone we've seen Van Gaal doing it <laughs> do you know what would be interesting the Tottenham series you've seen that on Amazon I've I have, seen, I haven't I've watched seen, it, seen, I haven't I haven't watched it. Yeah. to be honest I've been a pagan it's there for me to watch, mm -hmm. but just because it's Tottenham and Mourinho, I'm not sure. I would advise I you, recommend to, watch, you I recommend to watch it. To watch it just to see what's like. Exactly. Unless it's behind the scenes. The reason why I bring that up is because I would absolutely love to see a similar show with Manchester United. True. Just to see what Oli does in the change. Yes, can I ask you a question? Go for it, bro. In, during the see, um, the, that show, you saw how many times Mourinho had discussions with. Um, the own what's his name? What's his name again? Oh, Danny Levy. Yeah, 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 and what yeah, they were discussing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Football, football. Yeah. Football. Do you it. think Oli got a social has conversations with Ed Woodward like that? Because I don't think Ed Woodward does that. Because that's how I know that Mourinho's in the place where he speaks to people about football. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. remember he said that apart from him when he was at Man United, there's no one up there that you can talk to about football. football. Do you think Ed Woodward? Sit down during the canteen every time they eat. Mm -hmm. and sit down with the manager say, no. "How do we improve? What can we do?" See that player. Why is he not improving? Why is he not improving? Of why, why is why is proper a bit inconsistent? What can we do to improve him? Do you think we should do this in training? Do you have, do you know what I mean? Does he have these conversations? Um, do you talk about contract with Oli that or no? I know he's he's leaving like, but let's just be nice. We want to get rid of him. Everyone, can I ask you a question? Yeah, this might be a random question. Go on, but. Do you believe Ed supports Manchester United as a team? Hell no! I don't he supports Barclays Bank. You know, these these his favorite team is the bank. <laughs> True. Yeah. It's a money man. Sponsorship. Anything that goes with money. But like the reason I asked this, I ain't never seen Oli really um Ed showing passion about United. The only thing I've ever seen around Ed I go in a Ed logo or something is probably the scarf. Not even a scarf, just just, just, a the, just, just the mask. That, the mask that, itself is the only thing that says Manchester United. Right. Like, I ain't seen him with Manchester Kate like it's over owners over heads. Go watch football man. the football team play. Actually got that kit on. But I've never seen Ed so that's why I asked is he a Manchester United fan or he does he just work for the club? Let me tell you this. Ed is a businessman. Top businessman. We're going to talk about very this good businessman. We're going to talk about this soon, but from the fact that we send lawyers to close potential deals tells me that Ed knows nothing about football. Tells me that the club don't really know what they're doing. Back in the day, we used to have Ferguson flying out to people's parents' houses, trying to get them to sign, telling them, "Yes, listen, we really want you. Yeah. You're going to play here. Yeah. You're a future prospect. Yes. This is how I see your career going going yeah. forward. This is what this is what, what we want, want to do. Versus now, mm -hmm. here's a hundred k. You're going to get a goal bonus. You might get an assist bonus. It's all about money. <laughs> uh, guys, I just want to ask you a quick question to answer to me. Um, if you was to get rid of Oli, who do you want? You. I'm happy you asked this question because I'm always going to take too long. It's going to be Poch. Poch straight away because he's the only guy who's available at the moment. Um, and if he could ask me why, I've got a reason why. Why Poch? We know why. Are you, you saying Poch? Six months, it made a difference at Tottenham. Yeah. Or three months, three to six months, different Tottenham. Uh, so I want to see the same thing United. Me? I'm not going to lie. To be honest with you, I'll be very honest with you guys. None of these managers, Poch, Pep, whatever, can save us. We need Jesus Christ as our as our manager. <laughs> we, no, we need Jesus. That might, we not need be, miracles. that might not be enough. No, even no, Jesus Christ might not be enough because what? when you have a board like the board that we have, mm -hmm. no, that's what that's what you put God up there. Okay, God, well, Jesus, God, Jesus, and then, Jesus and God. <laughs> no, I mean, we that's true, though. Though. Jesus and God enough. Look, he, no, we need miracles. It's been seven years since Ferguson left. Mm -hmm. It's still the same drama. Mm -hmm. So. 
I took that green V. You no. might have Poch. I'm not gonna lie. Thing. Jesus will come and bring the light to us from our darkness. Do you remember, we are in darkness right now. Do you remember now. last year mm -hmm. when I said to you guys, yes. that I would love to go at Old Trafford mm -hmm. and pray in the stadium. Bless the stadium. Bless the stadium. Holy water. Holy water. Mm -hmm. Pray. Mm -hmm. Just because I love this club. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. I've been stressing too much this club. Not even that. I will fast in that stadium. Stadium. In that stadium. Break my fast needed. as well. Break fast. Cry to God. God. We will help? cry to God in that stadium. Like God. Why are we not we love this club? We love this club. Like it's been a very difficult seven years for us. Like some of us getting old, yeah, wrinkle phases. Exactly. Because we don't smile because we're united. I I'm not gonna lie to you. My 20th to my 30th was the worst 10 years of my life. I enjoyed my from, the, from my teenage years because <laughs> my night was successful. For the moment I started going to uni, for the moment Virgin <laughs> retired, I did not enjoy my twenties. No. I did not enjoy my twenties, guys, and that's down to Ed Woodward and whoever he hired in within that time. I was miserable, you know. Relationship wasn't well as well. It didn't help. You, it doesn't help when your team is not doing well and your relationship is not good at the same time. You know, anything that your woman says, you snap at her because why? <laughs> it's not her fault. It's just like she lied. It's, it's true. Just, it don't help. No, it's true. It don't help the mental it's health. True. But guys, let's move on. Patrice Evra, we move on straight to Patrice Evra, <laughs> my guy, you know, Uncle Pat, you know, I love this game, hey. man, aka, you know, to, to, for him to wake up on a Monday morning, do you know what he does on Monday mornings? Excitement, he's, he's happy. active, he's happy. happy, he was sad and depressed, oh god, to see him wake up Monday morning, so you know what guys, Screw what I do on Monday morning, I'm tired, I'm, the, I'm going to get my chest out, 20 minutes, 20 minutes he let his heart pour out on the situation of Manchester United. Mm -hmm. He spoke about it. Mm -hmm. He said so much things regarding Ed Woodward, his level of incompetency, the people that he shouldn't trust, and how he trusts people from outside the stadium. Mm -hmm. And also Matt Judge, that useless man, like, what was that? That Mumu, Mumu. that useless Mumu, that's like, <laughs> Mumu, you know. Are there? If you guys don't understand that, of course, if you guys don't understand that lingo, it means, means waste man. Waste man. Basically. Basically. Um, Amok, what did you think about that video and what the things that he said? Just give me a rundown quickly, Doc. Just about one minute. What's it called? I would opinion. say I was happy to watch Evers' video because I was a really sad fan after watching the Crystal Palace match. But when I watched Evers' video, it gave me a little bit of relief, like knowing that the situation of surrounding the club and the sad things that we might talk about, but we don't really know what's going behind the scene. Like you're not recommending me to watch the top nine thing. Yeah. But every video was a brief, a, a, a fresh air for me. I loved it because it did touch every single point that I wanted to know. One thing I didn't agree with him. He said that the Avram Glazer or the Glazers love Match United. Uh, you can say Avram loved Match United, but I don't know if it's true. Yeah, but I told you he was being political when he said that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you know he's still going for that position at United. So at the end of the day, you got to be nice to your owners. So when I that be that claim, but, I was... I but, but was he being nice to his owners? Because he mm. kind of slammed them yeah. at the same time, paid respect to one of the members. Yeah. One. Just one. Avram Glazer. That's the whole say, thing. That's the whole thing. I would say, Evra, yeah. I love, I love, he I loves love the game, him. I love him. Mm -hmm. love um, him. Unlike other professionals in and around football, People are concerned about their future jobs. People are concerned that you can't really say anything because it will affect your future livelihood. He is Manchester United through and through. He, said he is there to represent the fans. Mm -hmm. He knows of the last two years, all of these comments out in the media that have gone against Manchester United, he knows that it's to his detriment. As much as he would like to work for Manchester United in the future, mm -hmm. He feels like it's more important for the fans to have their say. Of and course. he's representing us. Yes. I would love to see more people like that to come out. Maybe Rooney to come out and say he's disappointed. Maybe the likes of David Beckham to come out Ferdinand and say... Ferdinand did come out. Van Persie did slam Oli Oli. And he guess he's been coming out a lot. Who? Um, Berbatov. Even though he didn't play that much, yeah. that long for Manchester United. Berbatov loves his He love. shows... He loved Manchester so much that that's where he played... His entire career, but he, he, no, no, he loves Manchester. He doesn't even think about Tottenham. He <laughs> doesn't even think about Tottenham. I've got this guy on Instagram. His yeah, Instagram yeah. page is after Manchester United. So you see this ex-player showing love for the club. I love that. Right. But to be honest with you, 
it's how much how much you're gonna take from this how like what i can say i took positive from everyone's video but how, how many times i'm gonna take positive from people saying this and that we need to see actions we definitely True. need to see actions but for us to for actions to be taken a lot of people need to voice their opinion we've been saying this a long time that mansion are being ruined by the by the owners and the people that run the club so it's nice it's it's, it's, it's nice to see one of our ex-players who mentioned that said he gave his life to this club to see this club like this a lot of players gave their life to the club. everything their time they had to, the fact that ever said when he signed the new one and he saw his child his child said he hates Manchester United so why because they took his daddy away from him that's how much of a sacrifice that's he made he made for this club so for them to just tarnish the club like that is disrespect to every legend and every painful player. Even Sir Alice play. Ferguson, and what hurts me the most is that a man that said that's always happy toward the end of that video says, I don't even know if I can say I love this game no more. That's how upset he was. <laughs> like, he doesn't even know if it's right to say I love this game, but I love this game. It wasn't the same I love this game passion that he normally does. He was hurting. Mm. It, it's just sad. It's sad, guys. Guys, in the comments, you can let me know what you thought about that video. Whether you think that ever was right to say this and that's why I said what you agreed on in, on these comments, let us know. We would like to know, guys. And we're moving on straight to the second, the next, I'm sorry, the next debate we would look on. We can we can technically talk about transfers briefly. We don't want to spend too long on it. True. Sure. What's going on with the transfers? Are we are we are we going to sign this tell us guy or not? Very like, slow. The fact that we have agreed to deal with tellers in principle. In principle, that's what we, we do. cannot execute a 20 million euro deal. 20 million euros is about 19 million pounds nowadays, maybe 18.5. We are trying to negotiate from 18, 18 million. Who who do you buy for 18 million nowadays? Let no, me just no one. Let me just, James, intercept maybe. You, let me just intercept you quick, right? FC Paul actually put down the price, the asking price for this player. So Manchester can afford this player since we're going through whatever we're going through. Yes. They put down the price of the player. They put it so down. So why can't you take advantage over that, like you said before, based on the corona? Because corona changes everything. Yeah? So why can't Manchester take advantage of that price going down? Because that's not his price. Discount and add-ons. Yeah, that's what Matt George wants to do. Discount <sighs> and add-ons. They want to try... Like, just to think about it, they're the type of people that go into the pound shop and try and negotiate a pound deal to yeah. down 50 yeah. It's one pound! And you're still trying to negotiate that. <laughs> they will, that's how people that will go into a sell, sell 40% off almost everything. And still try to negotiate a sell. Look for something that's on sale. For foods on the IM, say, oh, this got this little crap thing. Can you give me 10% off? You know? You only got 40% off. So you want to go 10% off. It's, it's, like, shit, shit. It's, it's hard. Bad. It's embarrassing. It's, no, Baba, it's literally it's embarrassing. embarrassing. So it no means things been embarrassing for so long. Mm -hmm. It's that getting painful. Like you as one well get hurt. We've been hurting. I'm Definitely. Not. Why do you think I don't watch Sky Sports News anymore? Don't. <laughs> Every day is. Are we gonna get Sancho? Are we gonna get Sancho? We've been talking about Sancho for weeks, no. if not months. Yes, almost a year. Thank you, bro. Almost a year. year. And it's a case of just like Telus. Dortmund have given the, the price. We will leave it. Or leave it. Do, uh, yeah, just like tell us that Porto, like I said, Porto. They put down, they put down, the, down price. the price. They cut just, down the just, price. Just so we just, can afford it because they knew who they were going up against. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what? We're going up against Matt Judge, who doesn't know nothing. You know, we really want to get rid of the player. Let's just put the price down so they can meet us. We hope they can meet us there. They probably <laughs> offered 12 million <laughs> adults. 3 million if we win the Premier League or Champions League. <laughs> One million if coronavirus is sorted out by the end of the year, <laughs> and another million if he gives if his missus gives birth. Yeah, it's, 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 it's unrealistic add-ons if his missus gives birth. Shit, can you imagine? Hey, brother, I like that. You know, <laughs> actually, you like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Missus, you know. <laughs> hey, oh. you see, that's the best thing about what we do. Mm -hmm. We using Uber to take up that stress and pain. That we've been going through. Like you just saw at the beginning of the this um, uh, um recording. Yeah. I was not happy, but thanks to these guys, it's for some reason for small my face. That you know what I mean? Like I'm gonna appreciate that. Cause it's been a really dreadful like how can I say three months mm -hmm. for United 
since the Trump Tower thing opened, mm -hmm. it opened. Mm -hmm. It's been open for three months. That's what I'm saying. It's the longest trial we've had. We had. And we just got one. Had been for three months. Longest transfer in football history yeah, based yeah, yeah. on Corona. Yeah. And you got one signing and you are the richest club. And everyone spies, what usually as Manchester fans, what do you always get excited over? Manchester breaking financial record every single year. But for the past three years, we haven't really been active in the transfer window. Mm -hmm. And we need two free players. I think right now, if Manchester can bring two players, I could just go off my heart Sancho. Either Kulibali or Alaba. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. We go straight to the Did club itself. Um, I asked you guys a question. What do you think mm -hmm. Match United need to change? What do you think to make the team to make the club improve? I asked that one straight away. What's that? It's from the top. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in any organization. Yes. If you have poor management, it will trickle down of course. to the lower management Tri and eventually to the players, players, eventually to the youngsters, and then eventually to us. To the us, the fans? To the fans, yeah. And we got that ready. You don't have owners who love the club and want to see the club succeed, it will happen. Yeah, Look at definitely. Arsenal's owner. He mm -hmm. doesn't give a shit about Arsenal, mm -hmm. hence where they are. Mm -hmm. Look at our owner. He's in, seven years. He's in America yeah. with his feet up, watching... The, the and club there. And he's got no yeah. sport, he's got no yeah, sport yeah, yeah, yeah. He puts these money into them and he takes the money out of them. And that's the same thing that's what my owner did. In yeah. the last two years yeah. or three years, our next spend has been about what, 50 million, 60, 50 or 60 million a year? That is despicable. Teams yeah. in the mid table are spending more than us. Last season, Aston Villa spent 100 and. How much did they spend? Over 100 million. 100, 120 some, 127, I can't remember, but it's 120 something. And of the revenue. Fulham even spent 120 mil a season before that more than us investing to their club Thank when they came to the Premier League and bro ago. I want just emphasize on what you said right mm -hmm. Manchester we don't know how to do business do you know what I'm saying this we signed Paul Pogba for 100 million right and what happened the following season after Nima got signed by PSG how much Manchester set the pace for other clubs to start buying players that much and if you set the pace why would you want to mm -hmm. start buying players yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it hurts me. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we're breaking financial record every single year that go by. Yeah. Why can't we take at least twenty percent of that record, that finance, and put into the team? I'm, I'm at least twenty percent. Hey guys, who should we buy? Put a comment down. Who would you like to come into the club? Do we need the right winger? Do we need a centre back? Yeah. Do we need three or four players? Let us know in the comments. I feel yeah, like we need maybe them comments minimum that might two. help because you never know. And I hope Oli and Avran and Woodward is reading the comments. Of so course, can... <laughs> of course. You so know, you get know, the players in, man. They definitely have a burner account, man. They definitely have a burner account to see yeah. all of these things of because course. for them to react and say, "No, you guys." We're doing really, we're working really hard at doing transfers, guys. Just believe in the process, trust the process, it will happen. You're not giving us anything. F the process. F the process. That's what I'm what saying. Pro no, my question is what process? What, what, what process, Ed? And Jess, do you, you know said, what the Jess, process is? Order. No, what you, based on your question you asked, what do you think should change? Mm -hmm. For yeah. me, it's the structure. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up structure. Straight up. Straight up. up there. The old guy at the top. The old guy at the top. The old guy at the top needs to change. Bros, come uh, out. Oh boy, this is a wow. Yeah, exactly. But guys, let's move up. Let's wrap it up. We have this weekend. We Who are we playing this weekend? We're playing, is it Burnley? Burnley. Burnley. Away from home. I think it's away from home because we played our first game at home. So it will definitely be away yeah, from home. Yeah, it's away from home. Ah. Another one. <laughs> what do you think, guys? I want to ask you what you think of the match prediction. You know? Um, Jimenez VV. Mm -hmm. Tough game, Burnley. I'm not going to be excited like Burnley is like time. Burnley's like the Stoke. And let me just let me just say this. Mm -hmm. Remember I said 3-1? Mm-hmm. What happened? We lost 3 1. <laughs> opposite to what I predicted for my team. <laughs> like, the opposite of what I said, because he asked me my prediction. I said Manchester was going to win 3 1. Yeah. And it was just shameful. My little brother watched the video and called me, Cutter, I thought you said he was going to win 3 1. But we lost 3 1. <laughs> yep. So, all shame. I can say, I don't know. My prediction, I don't want to say something else. In cup, I'll see draw. Draw, yeah, yeah. yeah. Draw. Mm -hmm. The one one at least. Who would you like to see start? But would you like to see Bay start because he was he was very really good. Do you know to be honest with you? Yeah. The same team that started against um Crystal Palace. Yeah. But with two. 
player missing Who's that? that replaced in um, Jack's mention mm -hmm. Tom mm -hmm. and James yeah bringing Van der Beek what about, about Wamba Saka? You, you want Fosamens to start? No, I want Fosamens to start. Wamba Saka yeah. leave as well, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Even initially, I want to see more of him before he leaves. Mm -hmm. Wamba Saka, mm -hmm. yesterday, I wasn't really too impressed with him. Mm -hmm. Fosu, I know. I want to see more of him. I it's, think he's had his time, you know, bro. Yeah, but... We loaned him out to Crystal Palace. He was shit there. Yeah. He's come back No, no, there. no. He wasn't shit. Injuries got in his way. But who, who, who show, what do you think? My prediction, my prediction is going to be Joe. Yeah. And Jess, what about you? Joe, 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Woods probably going to score a couple. Yeah, yeah, 2-2. Two, two. Wow. Guys, and you know what, yeah? Not confident. <laughs> I'm not confident, yeah? I'm not quite sure what the team is at in terms of their match preparation. Because I do not believe we train, we coach, or anything. I just believe Oli sits down and talks about 1999 to the, to the players. <laughs> Hands in pocket. There's, there's, no, there's no coaching because clearly I don't see it on the pitch. There is no coaching. We have a man, what, we have a coach that still wears shorts. Who still wears shorts in this modern day era? He is a former footballer. No, but what? Other managers don't even kick ball. They just learn the trade. Guys, you need to understand that we are not a modernised club. From the fact that we have our one of our coach still wears shorts. <laughs> that used to be in the 70s and 80s. We're in 2020. My man's still wearing shorts. That's when we know that we need to change things. We can't be having Matt feeling up in here like... You can't be wearing shorts. No, no coach wears shorts. <laughs> no coach. You're old. You, you definitely, if you wear wearing shorts, you're a long ball coach. Brother, long ball, that's a very tall good man, position, short though. man. 442 type of coach. That's a very good observation. We need, we need better coach. I didn't know. I didn't even pay attention to that till you're saying it now. Well, guys, my match prediction for that match, I'm not going to lie, it's going to be a draw. I'm with my brothers right now. It's definitely going to be a draw because we couldn't hang with Luton yesterday. We, we're we not being negative or anything. No. We've just been factual. Based on what we've seen and yeah. how the team performs, we don't want to give people fake prediction or whatever. We're just going to be broke. Mm -hmm. So even if we win, we could take it positive out of the win mm -hmm. and see improve our next video where I go with it, but definitely the job. Draw. And uh, James, would you, would you like to see start from yesterday's game? From yesterday's game? Yeah. Van der Beek? Yeah. Come on. Van der Beek needs to start. Um, Pogba Fernandez in there as well. We need Greenwood back. Definitely. Because that goal he scored was splendid yesterday. All being Matchless. Um, Rashford and Martial win. What about in defence? Defence, Maguire, Bailly, because I feel Bailly was quite good yesterday. Let's yeah. give him a run. We need, we, need, we, need, we need that pace. He's a bit erratic at times, yeah, but, but hopefully he can stay fit this season. We need that pace. Fit this season. I would say, and then, you say Maguire, Bailly, I would say Lindelof. Ah, uh, screw Lindelof. 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 Yeah, yeah, he's shaky, but he's, I believe he's a far he's he's better, he's better, better than Lindelof. Mm -hmm. I would say Bailey right now because that save they made yesterday was the match. Off the line. I loved it. Mm -hmm. He played goal yesterday, bro. He played, we he need his recovery. I, it's, it's funny, that recovery. Do you see how many tackles he made and he got the ball? Yeah, we, we need that. that. We need that. We, we miss that. that. He's a bit erratic at times, Bailey, but all in all, he's a decent defender. So I, I would like to see him start a few more games. Get a run of games, maybe mm. three or four games, because he's always in and out. So True. let's see what he's actually about this season, you know? Well, guys, we have come to the end of the show. I'd like to thank you for watching, as always, you get me? Let me, um, as always, as we end the show, my I'm going to watch the socials. And if you really, remember on top of the head. My shoe shoes are going to be Amok the Nero. Yeah. For what? That's like my snap. I just yeah. changed the name. Yeah. It was used to be I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I got to change it to the name. Well, obviously, the money thing, isn't it? <laughs> and the, the Instagram is obviously pretty flacco. Don't know. Ah, uh, cool. Anything else? No Twitter? No, I don't use Twitter like that. I've got Twitter, which is Calvin, mm -hmm. but I haven't been on Twitter for the past four years. Literally, basically, you'll get airtime if you if you, if you, if you keep you me get airtime. True. And Jake's time, as always, mm. go on. <laughs> you ain't gonna find me, guys. <laughs> If you want to find me, watch the next episode. <laughs> find me. That's the best. I love that. I love that. I love that. It's better than finding me the library reading my books. <laughs> yeah, it's way better than that. Um, I ain't reading no more books. <laughs> and guys, of course, as always, remember to subscribe to this channel. Of course, smash that like button as well. Press that bell. 
share it out to your mom, your sister, your grandma, everyone, you yeah, know, fans, your ex girlfriend. Even if you don't like your ex girlfriend, share it to your ex girlfriend. You know, make her upset. It's just Give the up. beginning of a great. And if you want to win your ex girlfriend back, just send them the video to be like, what is this? So you can just stop me the icebreaker. So you know what I mean, innit? I remember, guys. You can follow me on Ivorian Spice of Ivorian underscore Spice on my personal Instagram account, but do remember to to follow the actual official the Red United. Ray Night TV One, baby, remember yeah. that TV One. Yeah. Yes, guys. The social are above. Also in the link description, guys. And remember, guys. As always, remember keep it united and keep it Red United. We are out, guys. And also pray for us. Yes, we need a praise. Pray. Dano.